Will you get scolded by your dad for using the word Bollywood? <laughs> <laughs> I used to play proper like stadium matches yeah, and yeah, yeah, sports yeah, yeah. centuries yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that. I used to be raising my bat yes. and all that. Like this is tentacles <laughs> coming out of the half right. Like. <laughs> 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 Edgar Allan Poe, Chetan Bhagat, guys. <laughs> He'd be doing cartwheels in his grave. <laughs> a character would come in and put his gun into his holster and take a seat, and then my dad would go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so SRK used to joke a lot about that with me. He used to be like, uh, "Your dad gave me a tough time in Chahat, so now I'm also going to give you a tough time." I'm joking. <laughs> he told every one, "Give Vivan a tough time because his dad gave me a tough time in Chahat." Wow. You know, hockey stick wielding. Big guys say, "Oh, look at this! Look what he's doing!" And they'll, they'll wave the comics in front of the entire hostel and be like, "Ah, they get what they're doing." So now, what if Aryan works with your dad? <laughs> Hello and welcome to a special podcast for the Quint. This is Pratik Lidhu, and this is Vivan. My name is Vivan Shah, and it's so wonderful to be here. Acha, by the way, how do you introduce yourself? मतलब because usually people, okay, I'm an actor, I'm a writer, I'm a journalist. Yeah. How do you? Actor slash novelist. <laughs> slash theater person. Slash theater person. Yeah, actually, there's three slashes. How many slashes there's are two there? Two slashes. And how many more are you planning <laughs> to add? Only these three are. Okay. There'll be too much. Then I have to say Renaissance man or something. It's not going to be enough. There'll be too much. But yes. uh, but yeah, it's it's interesting and it's funny. You know how both professions complement each other because essentially both are about communication. Yeah. Both are about the art of communicating yes. thought yes. in different forms, either verbally or in in acting through, mm. I guess, expressions and gestures and yeah. in, in literature through words. Mm. So it's 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 amazing how th- there's a sort of lovely symbiosis between mm. both art forms and both professions. Yes. And talking about communication and talking about words, <laughs> we are talking about his third book. Yes. His third book, The Forsaken Wilderness. So tell us a bit about this book. So the book is essentially a science fiction horror novel. Okay. Uh, which is sort of uh, cloaked in the garb of an adventure story, of an adventure. So again, story. like your life, science fiction slash horror slash. Slash again, oh, go, go. so every <laughs> the slashes, there's sort of hybrids of different yeah. different forms, and and in particular, this one is is really drawing from the tradition of horror mm-hmm. and speculative sci-fi, which does not deal with the supernatural. Mm-hmm. So it's not about ghosts and spirits. Yeah. It's not about paranormal phenomena. It's about something that's potentially even more eerie than mm. that which is the mysteries of the universe mm-hmm. the sort of unsolved enigmas mm. you know whether it i mean the couple of instances that come to mind of course are the bermuda triangle yeah, and the pyramids yeah, yeah. and various things like that but this deals with a, a similar sort of enigma which could possibly exist in the himalayas of course it's a fictitious it's a fictional it's mountain, a fictional mountain. but it, the the there's a non fictional foundation is a non fictional base mm-hmm. and that's one of the great joys of fiction is that you start you proceed from a place of mm-hmm. reality and then you can probably go off into uh, not necessarily fantasy but surreality surrealism mm-hmm. in a sense you know yeah. and, and and that's always been an essential aim of mine is to bring a kind of a surrealism this you know another interesting thing about the genre itself so there was a genre which predates the movement of surrealism which is called weird fiction okay so in the 1800s that's the name that's weird the, literally <laughs> that's a whole genre of thing is called weird fiction so uh, my personal favorite writer of all time is edgar, edgar allan poe, allan poe yes. yeah so edgar allan poe pretty much spawned this entire movement you couldn't classify his stuff as weird <clears throat> fiction because it didn't deal that much with the realm of fantasy but whereas uh, the, the offshoots of poe people like uh, uh, clark ashton smith mm-hmm. uh, arthur macken algernon blackwood hp lovecraft who's one of the most famous by the way guys please keep writing all of this because <laughs> this is like some <laughs> by the end it's going to be like a crazy recommendation list <laughs> keep google and yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you so say. that these these uh, these writers they always sort of dwelt within the realm of fantasy but they were using science rationality mm. and logic to sort of justify their uh, horrors and also to justify some of the occurrences in their books some of the things mm-hmm. that were happening so they weren't that much uh, out of they weren't requiring that much suspension of disbelief on behalf of the reader uh. it was more of something that uh, you think that this could possibly occur this could possibly exist and hence it makes it even more scarier in a way 
Hmm. So would you call this book as well weird fiction? Absolutely. Nice. In fact, this is a, uh, an example of weird fiction, and it's also an homage mm -hmm. to weird fiction. It's also an homage to those predecessors and 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 to that whole tradition, the style of the writing, especially that this this is uh, written definitely in a slightly classical, yeah, yeah, yeah. archaic I could. register. Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, as opposed to my first two novels. Even though it was very Indian and it was very rural in that sense. Yes. but it was the writing still was very the like, writing style is a little yeah. 19th century kind of you know that sort of classical almost those the register is filled with archaisms and another important uh, literary experiment of mine was because you know the thing is uh, pratik it's interesting that in today's day and age with contemporary literature there's a tendency towards minimalism Uh, I e shorter sentences. Yeah. So you have the short clip sentences yes. and staccato rhythms. It's a very Hemingway kind of thing, you know, the mm -hmm. Camus Hemingway days. To we had mastered that thing yeah. of the short sentences or of encapsulating perhaps very complex thoughts and distilling down, distilling it down to its bare bones, its essence. Mm -hmm. Whereas I am screeching in the opposite direction. I am mm -hmm. trying to emulate the slightly more convoluted. and baroque uh, sentence construction style of people like uh, poe and and even joseph conrad and people mm. like that whose whose sentences were windy you know they yeah, were yeah, they had, had an arc in themselves they had an arc in themselves they had a rhythm yeah. so it is about uh, the deploying irregularities of syntax and and uh, various uh, other literary experiments like that to to basically uh, to create a musicality to create a musicality to the prose i am a musician as well i am a musician i play the guitar by the ah, way yeah exactly. so my brother is a musician i am ah, a sort yeah. of a musician from a recreational point of view <laughs> i unfortunately never developed so i am a guitarist so unfortunately i never developed beyond chords here ah, notes pe ah. mai i just didn't get to notes so i can't do finger picking and all i can just play chords <laughs> And I'm a pretty good strummer, but I can't like do the. <laughs> you can get your brother stuff. for the chords. Yeah, you... <laughs> exactly. We would make a great band together. <laughs> Two man guitarist. Two man guitar. <clears throat> so yes, so the music is an essential part mm. of my life. It's a very, it's one of my first loves. I would say as an art form, but uh, but yes, the music. What had... did you get introduced to first? Music, acting, theater, writing, all of because since you have that legacy of a family of artists, let's just yes, say. not absolutely. let's not limit them to. slashes <laughs> yeah so what did you get introduced to first in your life so my first art form was comic books essentially oh, as a child like and reading or drawing? reading and drawing both hmm. that's what i did i essentially was a comic book artist as a kid i was that's all i would do slash comic book <laughs> <laughs> no but now that slash has gone i'll tell you why it's funny because i was that's i was really an obsessive comic book artist what okay. kicked the habit out of me was boarding school now because <laughs> of course it did <laughs> because boarding school is such a jock environment yeah. the last thing you want to do is be caught by a bunch of Uh, you know, hockey stick wielding <laughs> big guy say, "Oh, look at this! Look what he's doing!" And they'll they'll wave the comics in front of the entire hostel and be like, "Ah, they get what they're doing." But like they would have taken the piss out of my yeah. comics, so it's it's sad, you know. But I mean, on on the other hand, we did have an art school, and mm -hmm. we had very brilliant artists and sculptors in Dune itself. In Dune itself, mm -hmm. and we had a brilliant. But that's a legitimate endeavor. That's Achha, something which yeah, is like yeah. serious. Like it's going yeah. to come in an exhibition. It's going to mm -hmm. in Founders Day. It'll be showcased, and you. Do you imagine a, different... a comic book at an exhibition? <laughs> there's a respectability to that, yeah. uh, even for the jocks. But a comic book would be laughed at. They'd be like, ah. "What the hell are you sitting at your study table and doing? You know, going why aren't you going at the football?" feel it was like that kind of a mentality okay. almost so that out of i guess self consciousness and that adolescent kind of real <laughs> fear and nervousness you know of trying to conform also you know that's another one uh, you want to be you want to conform you just want to be like everyone else mm -hmm. and especially at that time there was really a tendency towards conformity both i could say in a personal as well as professional sense like i remember and that's an interesting thing because i grew yeah. up in an environment which was as anti conformist which uh, no but uh, but yes that's the number one uh, that my family uh, they are more sort of rebels and renegades uh, as far as the establishment and the system and bollywood and all that kind of yes. stuff is concerned right and uh, the funny thing Will is you get scolded by your dad for using the word bollywood <laughs> 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 But that's why I said that like, they're rebelling against Bollywood. Yeah. Like they're not like that's that's the, then it's an appropriate to use that house? term. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, like uh, I mean, my actually my parents never really liked Bollywood movies, exactly. that, except the old ones like Guide, which you just mentioned. That's one of my dad's yeah. favorite movies, by the way. In fact, that's actually is probably one of his favorite oh. movies of all time. Yeah. And and so uh, it's interesting that Nasir sir, this book reminded me of Guide. Just that is. 
I can't tell you how much that means to me. That's that's a huge compliment. And uh, so essentially, what happened was that uh, the doon in the boarding school environment, especially then, was an environment which was very divorced from show business, very mm. divorced from Bombay, Bollywood, that world. Yeah. Right? It was it was a fiercely academic environment, mm. and it was a fiercely it was. I remember vividly once a senior of mine when you you know when you go to eleventh and twelfth, you have to select your extra subjects. You, you uh. narrow it down, and uh, you're not studying everything. You get to choose what you want to study. Humanities Science, humanities, and, uh, of course. Yeah. So I remember once this senior saying that, uh, "What's so difficult about this choice? If your parents are doctors, you pick sciences. If your parents are businessmen, you pick commerce accounts." Khatam. Humanities me, five log the. I was out of hundred people in the batch. <laughs> There's five of us in humanities <laughs> who are studying history, geography, and uh, and elective English. And so that's why you know it's funny that uh, in a weird way uh, because of the sort of jock uh, conformity element. I guess the arts were not the in thing mm -hmm. in a boarding school environment such as that. I would think that things have changed considerably in that regard, even in a place like like Doon, because mm -hmm. the, the world has changed so much in the yeah. last twenty years, right? We're talking about two thousand and five, six, seven. That time, you know, which was, a, and oh. and so uh, at that time there was a sort of narrow-minded approach as far as that is concerned, and and uh, so so uh, which is why comics was my first love, yeah. essentially. Then after that, theater. Mm. Then after that, music. Mm. Then after that, film. And film. And sorry, sorry. I would say theater, uh, music, and literature happened concurrently. Uh -huh. And film also happened in a big way. Cartoons, film, of course. Yeah. That was our, that's our, always our first interest, our, our first love as kids. You know, that's what we kind of get obsessed with. And uh, so it's it's interesting that all the art forms uh, over different periods of my life, I think, uh, uh, resonated with me and. Uh, Caused me to try and to take a crack at them, hmm. various mediums, right? Yeah. So there was hence a, the slashes. Hence the slashes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there was a time when I would have said slash musician also, which I wouldn't dare say. No. <laughs> that was like being a little delusional. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned theater, and yeah. I like this got me thinking. All the film actors, then yeah. you know the film actors of some repute, they talk about theater as if it's some mandir. Yeah. Why is that? Like yeah. like your parents, like a lot of other art artists that we have, people who are like in film and who are the more famous people yeah. who get covered a lot, they talk about theater as if it's some really pious yeah. activity. Why is that? Because you know it's almost like from a musician's point of view, it would be the difference between a CD and a live performance. Acha. Like that, right? So like uh, there's a there's a whole different exchange of energies which occurs in a live performance between the artist and the audience, mm -hmm. and also uh, for the simple fact that man. The theater gave birth to film, mm -hmm. so you have to bow down to your predecessors, film, right? Yeah. You know, and there was a time when cinema was regarded as the illegitimate offspring of the theater. Uh -huh. You know, when cinema was invented, it was a Nickelodeon novelty. It was like something that used to be shown at car carnivals and fairs. Yeah, yeah, it was like, yeah. like, 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 like from all across the world from france and america and various people like dw griffith one of them so these people made cinema into an art form because they were also coming from a literary tradition they wanted to imbue it with mm. the same respectability of a dickens or a tolstoy mm. you know they wanted to have the same they wanted to have cinema on that same that same level in a sense mm. uh, so that's why is that it's 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 uh, but also i would say from a more uh, practical point of view the reason why people perhaps feel that way is because the sharpening of the craft that mm -hmm. happens in in theater mm -hmm. is something that can only aid your film work and and in mm -hmm. fact it's a fact of it's it's a true fact that a lot of the great filmmakers uh, a lot of them do come from a thea exactly. theater tradition yeah. and they try to create an atmosphere on the set which is as close to a play which mm -hmm. is possible because i'll give you i'll give you a small example like suppose uh, we're shooting a movie and it's two of us sitting across the table talking mm -hmm. now often times in a movie and especially if it's a commercial kind of movie with a certain kind of lighting and what not a certain kind of visual tone what will happen is it won't be both of us sitting at the table and talking it will be there'll be a cutter stand here there'll be lights here there'll be there'll be uh, a thermocol here there'll be probably the, the space will be bifurcated and divided yeah. we might have to be i might be talking to you but i'll have to be looking out there like that yeah. so there's all this kind and of and in the age of green screen i might not even be might here might not be there exactly my might character would be some spider man or some <laughs> other man and i would be just a green mask we could be talking from like delhi and bombay <laughs> we shooting the same scene but uh, but but in theater if we had to do the same scene then it's actually two of us sitting here talking in there's the place, no yeah. there's no sort of uh, levels of artifice mm -hmm. in between that 
and and and, and film the challenge becomes when there's so many layers of artifice, makeup, shakeup, ye, wo, mm-hmm. all that. How do you achieve truth? Oh. So that has always been the filmmaker and the film actor's uh, uh, pursuit mm-hmm. to to achieve truth. And especially now more than ever, because now Indian cinema is going through a wonderful uh, sort of phase of naturalism, mm-hmm. realism. Yeah. Right, gone is the sort of uh, the, the, the sort of more fantastical elements mm-hmm. that were prevalent yeah. in Bollywood earlier. Now. The audience also wants to see real life depicted on screen. Mm-hmm. They want to see uh, something that is believable. Yeah. They want to see something that they recognize. They want to see something that they can associate with, and and that is, so. Which is why in we are right now going through a very interesting phase phase of uh, realism and naturalism, especially in acting and as far as mm-hmm. filmmaking is concerned. Yeah. You know, it's almost like a documentary aspect to it. We're trying to show, yeah, yeah, and especially yeah. small town stories. That's another biggie yes. because earlier it was always very Bombay centric, right? Bombay, it was yes. always the, the voices that were telling the stories, the yeah. writing, the directing. Even I'm assuming, I think the way films are being made, I would assume a lot less sets are being constructed. Yes, yes, like yes, 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 yes. Emphasis on real locations. Emphasis on real locations. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's a big thing. Mm. I mean, uh, that's a, that's a huge thing. I would say that the the realistic filmmakers would always prefer to shoot on a real location as opposed to constructing. A and that you're saying comes from like that a comes theater from the theater mindset. Because absolutely, because then we're actually inhabiting the space. Uh-huh. Then it's actually two of us sitting at the table talking uh-huh. and not uh, sort of faking it in any way. Mm. It's we're actually inhabiting that scene and playing it. And so which is why there's there's a level of uh, I mean although people think the theater is slightly heightened reality mm-hmm. they think that it's it's slightly over the top and that sort of thing yeah. which 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 uh, I don't necessarily agree with that it's just a different you're singing in a different key okay you're yeah. singing in a different key you're, it's I don't think it's over the top or heightened or those kind of pejoratives mm-hmm. I don't necessarily uh, b- believe in yeah, that yeah because when you assume like when you think of theater it's always that oh, declamatory oh, that, yeah, 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 yeah. That sort of oratory style, but uh, but that's the thing is that in a sense, theater has always been closer to real life than film for the simple reason that you're inhabiting the space and you're also in, uh, inhabiting that truth within a given circumscribed amount of two hours or however long the mm-hmm. place. It's not a stop start break here. Yeah, 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 do it again. One more thing. And, and exactly the fact that there are no retakes, it yeah. makes it so much closer to life. Exactly. If I, if I fumble while speaking here, I can't be like, okay, cut, cut, cut. We'll do this again. <laughs> Correct, and and oftentimes there's so many times when a mistake, when the, an actor in a play makes a mistake, and audience doesn't really find out, but they know <laughs> they the people involved in the show know what has happened. They know yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> oh, interesting, nice. Okay, so coming back to the book. Yes. The first few pages, may he, I could read that you dedicate this book to Shiv, Shiv Subramanian. Yeah, so why exactly. is that? And yeah. what was your relationship with him? I've grown up. Uh, I've known Shiv Subramanian since I was an infant, practically. And uh, father directed a play called Julius Caesar Shakespeare yes. in the early '90s when I was an infant, practically, like '91. I was one years old, and uh, that was a grand magnum opus kind of production. And after that, we did Androcles and the Lion by George Bernard Shaw, which is another sword and sandal Roman epic, mm-hmm. and and. Shiv was and so many actors, you know, of that generation, and I've thanked a lot of them at the back yeah. also. Guys like yeah. uh, Denzel Smith, Joy Denzel Fernandez, Smith. Jemini Pathak, uh, uh, Divya Jagdale, uh, Shiv's wife. And I believe all of these people started with your father. They started right? with Motley. Yeah. They, they in various forms they started with Motley, yeah. and and uh, they they really are the backbone of Motley. You know, they're the mm-hmm. foundation. And and Motley, if you guys don't know, yeah, is our theatre group. group. And so when I was a kid, I really grew up idolizing people like Shiv, and and I was enamored by them. There's something really mythical. About Shiv, and when I got the opportunity to direct a play when I was 25 in 2015 of a play of Edgar Allan Poe short stories called Comedy of Horrors. So basically, yeah. I, I, I uh, it was such an honor to be able to direct Shiv and Denzel and all these guys that I'd grown up hero worshiping. How was it like directing these, these guys? Exactly, yeah. It was such a wonderful process, and you know that's what that was really like an MA in literature because I didn't do an MA, I did a BA, and mm-hmm. I didn't really pursue my academic. Uh, Life of as much as I wanted to or should have, you know, and uh, I feel that sort of the curiosity for learning also sometimes, ironically, has starts after graduation. <laughs> I know <laughs> those those years are a little wayward and yeah. confused, you know, at that at that point. So it was really was an MA for me because uh, uh, working with all of these guys and delving into the literature that I loved and that had affected me and that they also loved. Uh, 
and I introduced them to certain stories that they weren't aware of. Ambrose Bierce, another writer that we whose work, who's in fact Shiv did a short story by him, and uh, which is about a murdering chess playing automaton. It's a crazy story. It's about AI and all. Back then he was writing about that. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> and what is some of his work that our listeners and viewers can? You know, so uh, read and... he is he wrote and acted in the great film Parinda. Yeah. And many others. Ooh, what, I mean, a two st- what a role! What a role! Yeah, Francis. Role, Parinda, yes. He was amazing in Parinda, yeah. and so many other films. Most recently, <coughs> uh, Two States. Two States no. Then Kamine. He played the wonderful narcotics inspector Lobo in that. He also directed a film which never got completed. He's also a very good playwright. Mm-hmm. I forgot to mention that. And by the way, we also published a book of Shiv's plays. Yes. Posthumously, yeah. uh, it's sad that he wasn't around to see it. But I really feel that this is something that he would have been very happy with. Mm-hmm. He would have been really happy. Three of his plays: Irani Cafe, Clogged Arteries, and Snapshots from an Album. Plays which I've grown up watching, and it's it's a wonderful collection of of the works of a great Indian playwright, you know. And that's something that often uh, we don't shine a light enough yeah, on our playwrights. Yeah, exactly. You know? That's yes. that's another branch of literature which is very important, essential. Shakespeare, the Shakespeare, biggest, the gra- greatest of them all. Exactly. Playwright. Exactly. Nice. Interesting. Okay, so again coming back. Coming to back this, to the we'll, book. By the way, हम बहुत इधर उधर निकल रहे हैं. Yeah, yeah. Just like it's the nature of the <laughs> <laughs> digressions. Yeah. Yeah. So without any spoilers. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the book. Okay. And uh, by the way, I think this is a spoiler-less book. मतलब there can't be a spoiler because I have read this yeah. जितना भी I could and you can't spoil it. There's nothing Absolutely. actually that happens. <laughs> no, no, no. I agree with you because no. I mean, in a sense, I guess you could say in it's theory, an emotional spoiler. Mostly. Yeah, in theory, there are certain spoilers, but you know, I personally believe that uh, one should not be such a big stickler for spoilers in certain cases. My man, do you also feel that like at me? one point of time, I used people to are crazy go through the Wikipedia page, page of the of plot the films. Yeah. Just so that I know क्या होने वाला है and after that the film begins for me. Interesting. Because then it's like I have a May film in my head. Interesting. And then you sort of compare what the actual film. And it doesn't. It doesn't. And it doesn't ruin the experience. That see that's always been my belief yeah. is that the the work should deliver more than just the plot. Plot. Just than just plot the mechanics like of the plot. Plot is like a vessel. It's a vessel. Yeah. And there's hopefully more than that. But I do agree that in certain cases, like if it's a murder mystery, huh. if it's an Agatha Christie kind of situation, then you definitely don't want to spoiler. Yeah. You don't want to spoiler in certain instances. But and and of course in this also it does apply. Yeah. But I personally am not such a stickler for it, so yeah. I don't go very crazy if someone does spoil it. Also, I hope that it delivers more than that. As yeah. I said, that's the aim. Yeah. That's the essential aim. Is that it is more yeah. of a more of a metaphysical, as pretentious as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> it is the dune is coming, dire <laughs> dire. <laughs> no, it is. It is a bit of a. It's. It's a. It, because see, one of the main themes. Okay, I'll quickly just uh, uh, elaborate on the plot a little yeah. bit. The story is about a civil engineer who. decides against his better judgment to accompany a mountaineer by the name of professor charan prakash chaturvedi and his ex guide shera yeah. who's a local gadwali and one of the best scouts and trackers in the territory to a trek which has been prescribed to them by a local astrologer who he consults say the full name i'll say the full name <laughs> swami shri shri gurudev atal anivarya natija which essentially means अटल अनिवार्य नतीजा मीन्स द इनेविटेबल आउटकम जो होने ही वाला है सो इट्स ऑलमोस्ट लाइक उसका जो ज्योतिष का जो गारंटी है कि आपको रिजल्ट मिलेगा ही मिलेगा पक्का लाइक मैं मेरा नतीजा अटल अनिवार्य है इट्स इनेविटेबल आउटकम नाइस ब्रांडिंग एग्जैक्टली लाइक रिजल्ट्स गारंटी डिलीवर सो 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 basically the reason for the professor uh, chandran prakash chaturvedi his reasons for venturing up are, is because he's reached a state of financial and also spiritual ruin yeah. he's completely uh, In a sense, been banished from society. No one in the town of Uttarakashi. Everybody knows of that he's in debt, and he also he punched one of these uh, one of his ex guides who came to land up and asked for his payment. And and so since then they've lost all their business. That the, the, the camp he runs an adventure camp, mountaineering camp, and and basically the only the last resort is he just he just basically almost begs the Swami Ji to tell him, "Ki yar, me kya karu?" And the Swami Ji also that like, segment is beautiful where he's like, "Tum ye bhi nahi kar sakte, ye ho ah, chuka hai." This is too उंटेन यू शुड ट्राई दैट 
and you should definitely do that even though you're putting your life at hazard it's a very significant task that you'll be doing because you'll also be going there into uncharted territory and into the ground of non believers mm. into what is what he considers to be the heathen yeah. the unholy the pagan yeah. and he says you know civilize that place go and mark a rock out there at the temple and we'll build our own uh, temple out there and propagate yeah. our religion out there and that's one of the aims so the, the the professor's aim the professor's reasons for venturing up are religious mm. but the civil engineers yeah. are not yeah he is basically <clears throat> he's quite enthralled by the prospect of going into a place where mankind has never gone yeah. like it's 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 uncharted territory it's the allure of uncharted territory in his mind and he has his own peculiarities as far as faith yeah. and as far as religion i mean a self imposed religion yeah. in his case and as far as prayer is concerned and and so these people venture up the mountain and they sort of brave all kinds of privation horrible weather can all kinds of things happen along the way which completely confound and baffle them and it's also what happens is when you're climbing up this mountain as the increase in altitude occurs it causes a descent into madness yeah so as soon as you climb higher in the mountain you start to lose your sanity and that's one of the main reasons why no one has been able to climb up to rani bagh but one important thing i forgot to mention is that the only people that have been a uh, sort of apocryphally uh, been able to climb rani bagh are the sadhus and ascetics yeah. because they are the people they are the guys who basically even without the advanced equipment that a mountaineering party would have at their aid yeah. they are able to do without that bare feet yeah. like they literally it's like uh, rani bagh has never been trodden upon by the human foot save but for the bare foot of ascetics and sadhus mm. literally that's what it is yeah. and that also we don't know it's probably like a rumor or something maybe it's true so there is that aspect of it as well that there is a sort of almost an esoteric occult element to this place and that's what the mystery of this thing is all about and when they finally reach there in order to mark a rock at the summit uh, where they are to build a temple they find that a temple has already been built yeah. but a temple of such immeasurable antiquity yeah. that it does not appear to have been built and by, by the way mankind. all of this is the non spoiler version of this it. is the non spoiler this is actually some and by the way the they climb the mountain pretty early they climb the mountain pretty early yeah, yeah exactly so exactly. i was like ab hot i was assuming the whole book would is be, be about, about the yeah. the summit yeah but i was like even less than half way through yeah. i was like wo to pahunch gaye ab kya karenge Correct. but then that's where the actual that's when the stuff starts. actually starts yeah. exactly exactly and, and in fact that's a very interesting point that's a very interesting point because uh the uh, in the initial incarnation of it it was just the mountaineer it, it was just the expedition it was just oh, the mountain in initial draft the, the <coughs> initial incarnations i would okay. call it not even initial draft like before you put it to 2016 please. 15 around then oh, okay. like uh, that time it was more of a novella this was actually supposed to be one of my questions did you yeah. conceive it before or after the pandemic because but 2000 and looking at it yeah like with the pandemic and what has happened especially to the himalayas after that absolutely this you know very it, it really changes your perspective the that. conception of it was essentially two part it was uh, it happened in 2014 and 15 where i wrote this story about a mutant tree and i also wrote this uh, novella called both of them were novellas they were both long novellas uh, and this one is called the whispering skull which was about a mountaineering expedition which was just about that and uh, that was basically i over the years fused the two mm-hmm. and also expanded it into a novel and there was also a play which i had written which is about a mad doctor mad scientist in jim corbett national park uh, called dr shrivastav ka amar bagicha and there are certain elements from that these names are really interesting even in this book <laughs> the names are did you was that a conscious choice That's to give these guys absolutely you know, wacky names yeah what's completely. the what's i forgot the name of the narrator the eye character <laughs> his name is barkat singh randhawa barkat singh randhawa yeah and he's yes. such a kooky guy he's such a quirky fellow like strange fellow he's got his tics and all that he only uh, tells the reader his name in midway through yeah. the <laughs> at first i thought it's from the professor's point yeah, of view yeah, exactly, and then exactly. it was like a god like narrator or something but then there was i i i am like okay who is this and then i thought it's vivan's <laughs> point of view then like no then so, and it's not even him telling the name somebody i think calls him or something yeah, those well uh, he finally reveals his yeah. name about midway through the book when he's also lost the plot <laughs> because till then he's being very secretive he's like yeah. main nahi bataunga main kahan se hu yeah. main nahi bataunga main kya hu mera naam 
think I but I'll tell you what I do and I'll but tell you my whole yeah. story. But I won't divulge any details about my personal information. Uh. So he's we are paranoiac also. But then uh, so yeah, then it's interesting that you mentioned it's a very conscious effort to play around with names. Hmm. And in general, uh, in general always, always, always. That's one of the great joys of writing, yeah. coming up with crazy nomenclature, names, you know? Yes. Right? Like that's that's the fun yeah. part. That's one of the great and um, a lot of my favorite writers used to do that, you know, like uh, Edgar Allan Poe and even this guy called Thomas Pynchon, who's a crazy writer. His names are absurd. Like he'll come up with, I mean, his are totally like almost like absurdist kind of names. <laughs> like he'll have characters like uh, Professor Filament or Professor Lightbulb or, you know, that kind of completely nuts kind of yeah. stuff, you know, that he has very strange things like that. Or like, so so that, that's like a very modernist kind of thing which the the modernists used to play around with this mm. a lot. Anthony Burgess who wrote Clockwork Orange also. Yeah, yeah, he used yeah. to do that a lot with his with his names. These are these very funny, crazy, wacky names, long names, Ajeeb or Garib kind of also names. names which have a lot to do with the whole vibe of the with book. The vibe of the book. And exactly. Which are essentially foreshadowing yes. the story for you. Absolutely. And texturally they completely fit. Yeah. And they they also do a service to the texture yeah. itself. Yeah. So that's that's a very important part aspect of it, and uh, but yeah, so so twenty twenty is when literally this book took wing in itself mm -hmm. in a sense, you know. That's when that's when and by the end of twenty twenty, the first draft was complete, and uh, by twenty twenty one middle or so, I was very fortunate. I must mention the unflagging support and encouragement of Sa Shantan Ghosh and mm -hmm. Simon and Schuster. Shantan Ghosh, my editor. And also Simon and, Su Simon and Schuster, because they really believed in the book, they liked it, and also they let me do this literary experiment. Mm -hmm. You know, they did not dilute the prose in the editing process, oh. which could have happened. Could have happened. You know, if someone would have been like, you know, make the sentences shorter, make it simplify it a little bit for the reader, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And is that something that happens? I don't know if that happens, but that tends that tends to be happening a lot in Especially general. Especially it would be a fear. I'm it's a fear, but I'm witnessing a lot of that happening in uh, filmmaking and in various art forms mm -hmm. like that, where there's a tendency to simplify for the audience. Simplify, mm -hmm. uh, just make everything as understand comprehensible mm -hmm. as possible. It's difficult to try ambiguity. It's difficult to try uh, subjectivity in that sense, and it's difficult to 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 really try and do an experiment of that sort because you know all the great writers that I love and also the great even talk about music like some of the great albums of all time yeah. they were difficult they were not easy they were difficult to listen to they were difficult to listen to, listen to. they were dense they were yeah. dense like I mean the greatest example is uh, like in the late sixties when the music just started to get more and more complex. Yes. So Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Sergeant Heart Clubs, Pepper, Bam is like... Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, like what is happening? You you have to do a bit of work. Even but back in India, I would say. Back in India, of course, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm, back in India, no, I mean, in, in India, India. But, but I'm saying that, apna, but we have had a long tradition of yeah. that. We've never made it, uh, we've always... See, the thing is, now I think we're going through a phase of, it has to be simplified for mm. the person that is accessing the work. Yeah. I hate to use the word consumer, but Joby hai. Whether it's a reader, yeah, watcher, consumer, listener, jo bhi hai, consumer, and there's a tendency to simplify hmm. for the for the consumer, which uh, I'm not a big fan of personally. I understand the need to do that, I absolutely, yeah. and I respect that. But sometimes you want to sort of, uh, you know, spread your wings and fly, as cliched as that sounds, hmm. and try something. Would new. you say that your first two books was like an attempt in that? No, my first two books were even weirder than this. <laughs> Trust me, my first two books were completely, uh, they were they were even weirder. And that's the great thing about literature is that I get to do this weird shit. Because in film you can't. Yeah. There's too much money at stake. There's too much, I mean, in, too many people at stake. Too many people say. at stake. There's, there's uh, it's a different, and see that's what I find most liberating. And that's why also at the age of 24, I became essentially a novelist and I, spent, I, I decided on the medium of prose. See before that I was primarily a playwright. Mm. Like a lot of people in Bombay and especially people from the theatre scene oh, yeah. or even people from the film scene as I was. And and uh, so also screenplays, plays, that was my initial thing after comic books. Mm. So at the age of 24, after trying to get a play off the ground, after trying to make a film and that sort of thing, I decided at the age of 24 that I'm going to stick to literature because all I need is a pen and a piece of paper. <laughs> so it's a resource-free art form. Yeah. I don't need anybody's funding yeah. and I don't need anybody else's time. I don't need to hassle anyone to make my work happen. Yeah. Of course, after the work materializes, then I still need to sell it to a, yeah. 
uh, but distribution that's, I, that's over whatever. your headache nah, after that's a exactly but, but at least it exists yeah. it exists what happens is when you write a play or a, a play is different because a play can also be a literary experience you mm. can be, it can be read without being yeah. performed but especially when you write a screenplay that's half the battle one uh-huh. the other half is how do you make that thing materialize no. and uh, there's countless examples before me in my life of friends uh, siblings friends cousins who have tried to make their dreams come true in that regard and it's not happened mm. so i had a lot of cautionary tales as far as that is concerned and that's why at the age of 20 your father has had his hand in filmmaking my right? dad made one film in 2005 yeah. and he's he directed a short film right now mm. a very uh, uh, after 17 years yeah. and 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 in fact me and my brother used to keep joking with him that you know this is the time for him to have made a film <laughs> when yeah. Indian cinema has evolved yeah. like 2005 you know what kind of movies you're making yeah. back then right we were making it was it was a very constricted time at yeah. 2005 when you hota to kya you hota to kya hota hai and 2005 was a constricted time of course i'm not there was great films yeah. made at that time uh, vishal ji was still making brilliant films at that time you know as was uh, so many other filmmakers yeah. uh, but it the general climate of the industry was towards commercialism mm-hmm. it was towards a specific kind of mainstream ethos a kind of uh, uh, very uh, uh, it was it was a very narrow minded view of, yeah exactly yeah. and and my dad also also can I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about about the kind of stuff that I was trying to do uh, shantan let me do it mm-hmm. now in his case a thing that he wanted to do when he was directing a film is he wanted to have overlapping dialogue this is a filmmaker <laughs> called robert altman who used to do that a lot and my dad wanted to try something similar but then the sound recorder who was been around for so many years saying sorry ye possibly ek hi track chalega <laughs> ye nahi hoga sorry then uh, i mean so these kinds of things you know it, yeah. it was it was he wasn't able to execute his vision completely although that is a nice film there's some good things i quite like it yeah, yeah yeah but 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 anyways the time for him to have made a film was probably in the recent last 5 years or so because then indian cinema as we said has become more realistic yeah. more evolved more as so you thinking of oh but you so he directed are, he just he did a short film yeah, yeah and, and now is he, that the one that you acted in? i acted in that's yeah. right that's right that's like a family production that's right? a full family production yeah <laughs> literally like all Your of us were there also brothers there. brother uh, ad him basically he was a da Uh-huh. really hands on the film is called mw 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 yeah it's a short film and it's a very sweet romantic film and uh, yeah but i think he's got uh, bitten by the film making bug again so yeah. let's hope that yeah he makes nice. something you heard it first yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and so so that's the thing is that going back to why i settled on literature is because i had all these countless examples before me of friends sibling uh, elder, siblings friends cousins who were trying to make their the screenplays materialize but weren't being able to do that and when i tried to do that with my play and a screen couple of screenplays didn't happen 24 i said okay forget about everything else i'm just going to stick to the written word it's all about See the reader ko exactly there's there's just this production wagera ki kya zarurat production hai nahi exactly <laughs> it's just a pen and piece of paper and i find that very liberating uh-huh. and if if i may offer some i guess uh, wouldn't call it advice but definitely something that i can't emphasize enough i i keep stressing this to you know people in the audience youngsters who are who are trying to find their medium and their art form is that it's important when you're young and starting out to find something that's practical that's doable that's pragmatic that's not a pipe dream you know that's mm-hmm. not something which is like ki it's it's something which is realizable i think that's very important and covid also taught us that because yeah. covid may have been stuck at home we all had to make do with the tools and equipment and resources that we had at home yeah. and try to create some kind of work during that period so that's a very that's yeah. i think a very essential thing it's really interesting you talk about the pragmatic aspect of writing because writing is usually um, thought of as this really artistic and this really some wala art yeah, form yeah 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 but it's actually as you said it's like very sasta art form yaar bahut bahut sasta art form hai yaar bhai it's completely sasta art form and it's also it's it's it, i find that liberating as someone who's from the world of theater and film i find it liberating yeah. that i don't need to hassle anyone to make the work happen uh-huh. all right like that that's a great it's like again when i was a kid i used to draw comics same thing it was that it was a self sufficient and i'm saying even if nothing happens even if it doesn't get published you can always like just self publish absolutely you can always it exists ha huh, it exists at least it a exists. pdf version exists exactly 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 and and so so every art form has different uh, canvas like for instance if you're a painter you need a easel and a canvas if yeah. you're a sculptor you need a piano clay if you're a musician you either need a, it depends on what kind of music either the acoustic guitar yeah. or if you're an electronic composer that kind of you need a full orchestra there's different forms of that also if you're a uh, filmmaking the canvas consists of something else if you're a theater it consists of something else so every medium has its own uh, attendant canvas mm-hmm. attached mm-hmm. to it so 
study the canvas, figure it out, and it's like then when they say football for to play football, all you need is something to kick. That's interesting. I never even if you don't have a ball. You can kick this bottle here, and it's football. That's a brilliant analogy. I never thought of that. I'm so glad you mentioned that because that's actually a very interesting thing, and no wonder that football is such a popular sport in places where perhaps the players cannot necessarily afford yeah. expensive yeah. cricket bats or whatever. Actually, even cricket is like that, more or less. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but, but the, football is more <clears throat> so. There's half the sport is your body. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And all you need is one ball. Yeah. So it's like not even a ball. Anything to kick. Anything to kick. Oh yeah, yeah. of course. गाँव में तो यार लपेट के कपड़े लपेट के खेलते हैं फुटबॉल। We used to play football with our जो फॉयल का टिफिन लाते हैं उसका सारे लोग कलेक्ट करके बॉल बना के we used to play football. That's football. And we used to that's, celebrate like your Beckham and all. That's such a wonderful analogy. That's so well put, Pratik. Because that's exactly. I mean, that's 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 the spirit the of. Exactly. Yeah, this that's, feeling is the this, same. This feeling is the same. That's the spirit of why I became a novelist essentially mm -hmm. at the age of twenty-four, and and I decided to devote myself to that entirely my life. That's what. I, that's the medium that I've fallen in love with and and studied and and. So do you want to be considered like a novelist first? No. I guess that's not going to be possible because I'll always be an actor first. <laughs> <laughs> because you were an actor first. Because, yeah, yeah. No, and. Uh, No, I also must give credit to my acting for sort of propelling me on this journey because, huh. of course, number one, the fact that I am an actor perhaps did help get the novels published. Huh. You know, and giving you access to those rooms and those. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's that's. A, I mean, as much as I like to kid myself, saying that oh, I made it off my own merit and that kind of thing, and Both unfortunately, I don't even think you would believe. But that but much. that's the yeah. thing is that it, these factors do, I guess, play in somewhere at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, I hope that it's that's not the only reason. I hope that it, they were uh, published because the work itself had some merit yeah. in it. But definitely, I suppose, uh, having acted in films was uh, did certainly help. Yeah. You know. Well, whether one wants to acknowledge that or not, I think it's uh, it's the truth, and mm. one has to. Yeah. I have to accept that. But the fact is that beyond that, that's just the pragmatic aspect of it. I'm saying on a more philosophical level, the acting aided the writing because, as I said earlier, the play that I did with yeah. Shiv and all, and I also performed <clears throat> an Edgar Allan Poe short story in that. And when I was trying to adapt, adapt, means perform these pieces of literature that I loved on stage as an actor, I was trying to. Interpret them mm -hmm. as an actor. Mm -hmm. That is truly when my MA in literature happened. That's when I started to understand mm -hmm. prose. That's when I started to understand composition. Mm -hmm. That's when I started to understand rhythm. That's when I under understood syntax. All these, the fundamentals, the technique yeah. of it was really aided by my acting. Mm -hmm. I think I believe that writing should be a work of the imagination, mm -hmm. and that it should not just be dependent on one's life experience. Huh. It should be like an actor, right? Yeah. Similarly, I should be able to play a civil engineer. Similarly, I've written a novel from the point of view of a civil engineer, yeah. and I'm not a civil engineer. I'm not a science student. Also, I mean, I love sciences. I was very interested in the sciences, but as I always say, being interested in something and being good at something are two different things. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I always had a keenness towards that 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 sort of uh, uh, world, but I never uh, was good enough for that. But 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 uh, that's one of the important aspects of writing for me and that's my own philosophy of literature and of writing is that it should definitely be a product of the imagination there should be an element of invention there should mm. be a made up quality to it you know it's uh, and th that's why i feel is very important of course experience does inform everything yeah, yeah, yeah. that goes without saying but it shouldn't be solely dependent on what you know mm. you should all you should also be able to go into an area that you are not familiar with that you don't know and then hopefully expand your knowledge in that yeah. case and that's what blows my mind so much about writers like poe is that you know when you read poe you're like how the hell does this guy know so much about physics geography chemistry <laughs> biology yeah. like at was, that time at that time because he was also see so it's not just the product of a great artistic facility it's also great cognitive capability yeah. i mean he was like a bloody iit student who's writing yeah. literature literally yeah. he was like that he was chetan bhagat <laughs> edgar allan <laughs> poe chetan bhagat guys <laughs> he'd be doing cartwheels in his grave <laughs> <laughs> no shade <laughs> or edgar allan poe <laughs> No, no, no. Yeah, that was a joke. <laughs> joke. लिख तो यार यहाँ पे एडिटर प्लीज बड़ा बड़ा लिख देना यहाँ पे कि मजाक था ये. Ah, anyways, <laughs> this thing. Uh, so um, he'd be sorry. I'll pursue the joke even more. He'd be doing cartwheels in his uh, grave, which he got buried in alive because <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe had an obsession with premature burial. He wrote a short story called The Premature Burial. So for all you know, he's probably still in the coffin alive yeah. and hearing. Hey. <laughs> 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 Sorry, even more morbid joke. 
<laughs> yeah. I couldn't help myself. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so this thing, uh, so yeah, that's the that's one of the great aspects of 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 fiction and of the imagination itself. There should be of, it's about the fun of making stuff up. That's what writing is yeah. for me. You know, it's about the fun of making stuff up. It's, so it's writing, acting, acting comics, yeah. everything. It's absolutely, acting, absolutely. Acting. It is. It is. It. It's. It's what we did when we were kids. Hmm. When we basically we pretended. <laughs> pretended, absolutely right. Yeah. Whether we're playing chore police or playing with the GI Joes, I mean, I think uh, the dramatist's impulse starts with GI Joes. Hmm. Like I'm guessing, the, right? That's when we're staging scenes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, like, so all <laughs> all directors of some sort definitely owe a great deal to GI Joes, right? Yeah. That's when their dramat dramaturgical impulse. And somewhere they want to like preserve that. They want to preserve that sort of energy, that possible. kind of that. Yeah. That, yeah. That sheer joy of doing something for the sake of doing it, mm -hmm. you know, without having. And I also believe another thing about, I suppose, one of my beliefs about art, which is, and that's something which is even more difficult to sustain as one grows older, is to uh, to do stuff without uh, incentive, to do it for the sake of doing it, mm -hmm. not because there's some uh, end or goal uh, in mind, but just just for the sake of doing it, even if it doesn't reach an audience, even mm -hmm. if it doesn't reach a readership. Just for the sake of doing it, and and that's, and I must admit that that's difficult to do as you grow older. Yeah. Because when we are kids, we don't give a damn. We mm. do it for just for the sake of it. We show it to yeah. our parents, or we show it, you know, just we, we do it to for ourselves. Ourselves. <laughs> ourselves. We we sort of luxuriate in our yeah. own thing. In our Although own we show it to an imaginary audience. Oh, imaginary audience! And absolutely. React to, thank you. Thank I, I you. I remember like, I used to like do all these cricket poses, and then I do. used to I used to play proper like stadium matches yeah, and yeah, yeah, scotch yeah, yeah. centuries yeah, 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 and all yeah. that. I used to be raising my bat yes. and all that like. Oof. But but uh, but that's that's one of the great things is that if one can, because I find that, and uh, I'd like to ask you about that as as a as a as a musician as a as a rapper, do you find that uh, because uh, I know a lot of musicians, a lot of close friends, and what happens is that they uh, feel a lack of I suppose motivation to put the work out there. Oh, hundred percent. Right? Yeah. That yeah. That, uh, that happens. Yeah. 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 It's. That, that I mean I won't call it perfectionism, but it's like uh, you want to only make get it out once it's ready. Once, once it's, it's ready, ready as per your standards. Correct. Yeah. And so there's that there, then there's that uh, prob the, always an issue with completion. Exactly. Completion becomes a problem. That's and what they say, right? A project never completes. It yeah, gets it's released. It gets released exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just. It never gets complete, but but uh, but that's because also sometimes because as we grow older and as we think more pragmatically and practically, yeah. we do need a motivation in mind, exactly. right? Like even when one is writing a book, there is one side of the brain which is thinking that yeah, I'll send it to Simon and Schuster. Mm -hmm. Look, yeah. 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 That's why that that that's like a chabi to complete <laughs> it almost. Yeah. And that's a I'm afraid to mention this a little dishonest. It shouldn't ideally be like that. It should yeah. be a pure uh, incentive free. Uh, Unmotivated act, uh -huh. but that's of course very idealistic. I don't think which can change over time. Which can change like over this time. This book is that's it. Like yeah. when it ends, it ends. But in your mind, I'm sure these characters and these storylines would still be somewhere lurking around, right? Yes, and they can be called back later. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and 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 that's one of the great joys I think of any kind of artistic work is that. Uh, is that as you said, it's never complete. You're just continue continuously yeah. tinkering with it and continuously sort of reliving it in a way also. Talking about reliving the previous work of art, mm. how was your experience of Happy New Year? Oh, it was amazing. It was really like a intergalactic space yeah. voyage. It was going into a different planet. Wait, Happy New Year wasn't your first film, right? That first no, that was my film third film actually. Third film? Yeah, so I first film was, uh, it was actually technically my second release, mm -hmm. but it was my, in a sense, third film. Because I had already started, my first film was Saad Kunma. Saad Kunma. The second film, uh, I already started shooting it before Happy New Year. Uh, while, before I went to shoot Happy New Year, that was Bombay Velvet. Bombay Velvet. And then Happy New Year. The so Happy, but Happy New Year released before Bombay yeah. Velvet. And uh, so that is my second film. And that's also one of the most profound experiences. Because, you know, like, it's it was such a... See, like earlier in this interview, I was kind of like uh, knocking Bollywood a little bit, <laughs> and 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 uh, I guess there's it definitely deserves to be knocked. But I must stress, and I can't emphasize this enough, how much I uh, sincerely respect and love everybody involved with that film, mm. and I will always be grateful uh, to them for the rest of my life for how nice they were to me. 
and how warm and welcoming and accepting and and I never forget that even in my most uh, bitterest and most resentful moments, I never forget that. Mm. I always have that love and respect for for those for everyone involved in that film. Mm. And same thing with Saath Khun Maaf. Yeah. Uh, but 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 I always I always uh, will never. For, but but Saath Khun Maaf is closer to my world, right? Yeah, exactly. This is like a different this alien is world. Though, this is an alien world yeah. completely. I was going on to like the planet uh, Tralfamador or Pluto or something like that. Mm. I was going to a different and galaxy. It must have been fun. Of it was fun. It was but it was it also. But thank God I was young and stupid, you know. Because <laughs> I'll tell you something. As a 33 year old, I would have been way more self conscious. Uh, I would have been way more nervous and overthinking everything. At 23, I didn't give a damn. Yeah. I didn't. Give a damn! I was so bindas. I'm almost embarrassed of how bindas I was with these people. But I guess that worked for the character and for the yeah. for, for the whole ethos the of, whole the of the film. The whole sort of the film. The whole of the film. Exactly, it worked. But uh, but yeah, I would have been a much more neurotic if I had done that film at the age of 33 as opposed to 23. I'd have been way more neurotic uh, in the presence of these biggies. You know, yeah. I would not have been able to uh, to be a little more bindas. This is the sort of I guess the idiocy of youth. But mm. but uh, in a good way that in that it turned out in a positive way. But yeah, man, I'm telling you that was such a beautiful experience. I I can't stress enough how Only grateful. Like Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah, I can't I can't tell you. And you know what? Like, I'm not from their world, dude. Like, I come from the world of parallel cinema yeah. and the world of I'm not from the world of uh, this. In your Hollywood circle, stuff. I think the biggest Indian actor is Nasir. Yeah, and yes. and, and, th and that's what I'm saying is that I don't come from the world of. That kind of you know yeah. entire scene. I don't come from that scene. I come from the world of theater and of parallel cinema. I don't come from the world of uh, fashion shows and award shows and glam and glitz and all that mm. kind of stuff. That world is completely alien to me. Yeah. But uh, but they really accepted me. Yeah, I don't like because they love my parents or uh, <laughs> so nepotism. Yeah, again. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, but also I think they 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 took a shine to me because I as I said I was a 23 year old bindas kid. And so I guess they took a shine to me because of that, and uh, so and they would. I can't stress. I can't emphasize enough how nice they were to me, man. I just can't. It's it's truly. What would you think was harder and more, you know, uh, neurotic as you said, working with Shah Rukh Khan on Happy New Year or working with your father on stage, acting with your father? Because mm. both of them are like the biggest. Correct. Actors no, but he's my field. father. No, I've grown up. So <laughs> they, I'm not neurotic in his presence. Ha. But whereas when you are in the presence, not of even on stage. No, 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 no. On on the contrary, there's a great. How is he like as a person? Because he has this, uh, you know, image of being this really serious and very gusse wala yeah. person. So Albert Pinto ko gussa kiu aata hai. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a. So he, basically, you know, the interesting thing is that me and my father are kindred spirits, mm -hmm. artistically. Yeah. Very much so. I think I got my education in the, in the arts from my father. and also from my mother uh, but in an interesting way i got my it's it's interesting you know like i feel that there was perhaps more of the ideological sociological and political basis and and foundation with my mother mm. and more of the artistic yeah. aesthetic Uh, aspect dramaturgical dramatic aspects yeah. from my father so it's a it's an interesting uh, mix of both but the great thing uh, with, is that uh, truly my uh, like for instance he's in in a sense he's my muse he's the person that uh, wow. that i really write Very for nice. that i that inspires me the most and that who's has he read the book he's in the process of reading the book and uh, he uh, this thing he liked my second book He told me that he liked it, but he was disturbed by it because it was a very crazy, disturbing mm -hmm. kind of book. Uh, it was a very nihilistic book, the second one, the crime novel, and uh, uh, about a psychopath, in fact. Mm -hmm. So, like, so, but but this one, I think he'll 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 enjoy. I, think, I have a feeling that he'll like this one, uh, and so. But you know, it's interesting that we grew up. Our theater education came from him. Our literary education, a great deal of it, came from him. And our theater education came from him. <laughs> <laughs> and and also uh, this thing what do you call it uh, our my film education came from him like you know i'll tell you an interesting anecdote about how he used to show us films we used to watch a lot of films on vhs ld and dvd this is the prehistoric era yeah 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 <laughs> so so when we used to watch a movie on laser disc or something whether like it was like a sergio leone western is like good to the bad and the ugly which is a very visual experience there's yeah. less dialogue yeah. so you have to follow what's going on or if you know kubrick's 2001 a space odyssey mm -hmm. so you have to follow it's it's almost like visual wordless storytelling so what interesting that my dad used to do is when you're watching those movies he would pause it at one point and he'd be like samjhe 
फिर कंटिन्यू करूंगा एंड देन वील बी लाइक वील फेक इट ऑल्सो की समथिंग वुड हैपन अ कैरेक्टर वुड कम इन एंड put his gun into his holster and take a seat and then my dad would go mm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost like we are learning the graph of storytelling through his reactions yeah. it is almost like that so like okay he reacted he like reacted this way so that means that means some plot point is like yeah. something is unraveled in the narrative <laughs> <laughs> nice that's so yeah it was it was truly i'm telling you man like it is is an artistic kindred spirit and he's the first person that one wants to, i i share anything with you know whether it's a short story or a poem that we want to perform on stage or whether it's a play or something like that but it's it's a, it's a blessing to 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 be such to be best friends and to be uh, kindred spirits in that sense i it's a really it's a big blessing you know yeah we were talking about charu courses yeah and yeah how is and that? i'll tell you something man <coughs> mr khan is one of the most brilliant minds that i have exactly. ever encountered yeah. he is truly truly he is i mean he wouldn't like to be called an intellectual for sure but he is a person with a vigorous intellect yeah. Yeah. vigorous mm-hmm. intellect and he was also someone who's extraordinarily well read he's you know he was a topper in hansraj he's a brilliant mm-hmm. student he was a brilliant brilliant student a very good sportsman also i believe yeah. in hansraj and and he's just someone who is a f- phenomenally witty person and also yeah. phenomenally uh, his insight his insight into things is truly canny you know it's it's his his uh, you know a lot has been made of him as a great businessman and all that <laughs> entrepreneur and all that yeah. stuff ha ah, theek hai whatever but he's a great artist yeah. i personally feel he's a great artist because uh, you know there's a great saying which which applies to him uh, the, you know the filmmaker john huston who had a great team uh, uh, with bogart humphrey bogart mm. and him made a lot of films together and he was asked about bogart and he said something about bogart which completely applies to srk and he said that over the years he grew exceedingly aware of the dignity of his profession actor not star yeah. himself he never took seriously yeah. his work most seriously Mm-hmm. and that absolutely applies to you know and there's another saying in that i forgot it is it he in john huston says that that he says he <coughs> bogi he always uh, he regarded the the gaudy figure of bogart the star with a kind of bemused fascination <laughs> but bogart the actor he held in high esteem yeah and the same thing same thing applies to mr khan is that uh, he's extraordinarily self deprecatory a lot of the yeah. times he does not take himself seriously but he takes his work very seriously mm-hmm. and he takes the art and profession of acting very seriously and and he, he he understands the dignity of that profession of being an actor and not just a star and i would somewhere assume that also a stem of that comes from theater as well absolutely absolutely right. for, comes from theater from, as well for him okay. comes from theater and also comes from being interested he's a person who's who 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 who's he possesses that great quality interest hmm. and if you don't have interest in life i think then you run the risk of becoming a boring person and you also hmm. run the risk of being bored yourself bored. in life and unfortunately that perhaps happens to people when they achieve a lot of success yeah. is that they lose interest not just in their work but interest in general interest, interest as a thing as a thing curiosity right about yeah. life about whatever yeah. about work about or people and the great thing about srk is that he's uh, he has an equation with everybody everybody on the shoot is that thing is this chalo ab aayenge to let's clarify ki wo parties ke baad sabko chhodne aate hain absolutely because that has become like a meme at this point absolutely yeah. and he has an equation with everybody from the guy who runs the monitor to the spot boy to a ceo hmm. he treats everyone with respect and he treats everyone with interest and curiosity hmm. and that's and do you think that's common between your father and him absolutely interest absolutely having that interest can absolutely man absolutely mm. very much so they 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 have a very interesting uh, how is their yeah they have very they have an interesting they have a there's a great deal of mutual love and respect uh but like they but thoda to hoga no 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 kuch nahi aisa nahi hai aisa bilkul bhi nahi hai no like not in negative but yeah. both both they are from different worlds diametrically <laughs> opposite no i that they are saying because i think like srk joked about it also he said because he had done this film 
my dad did this film with him called chahat Chamat- no chamatkar Chamat- was awesome uh, chamatkar Chamat- was Chamat- brilliant was- but then he did this film called chahat and i don't think like my dad uh, particularly wanted <laughs> to be in that film <laughs> wanted to do that film and, and i think like th- that uh, this thing uh, what do you call it so srk used to joke a lot about that with me he used to be like uh, your dad gave me a tough time in chahat So now I'm also going to give you a tough time. Joking. <laughs> <laughs> he told everyone, "Give Vimana a tough time because his dad gave me a tough time in childhood." Wow. Obviously, he said that jokingly. They treated me like a member of the family. So what if they, they gave me the opposite of a tough time? They gave me the greatest time of my life, man. So now, what if Aryan works with your dad? <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. That's that's the he's a wonderful guy. And and uh, but yeah, it's interesting that but but, but like. It, it's funny though, mm. even though my dad and SRK come from very different worlds, there's a great deal of mutual respect yeah, and yeah, love. Yeah, 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 I would. It really is. Have you seen Pathan? No, but I saw the trailer. I love the trailer. Yeah. The trailer looked full on, man. It looked really good. We did like a full one hour chat about Pathan. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh. With spoilers, theories, everything. And all that. It's like, nice. No, I thought it was extraordinarily yeah. well made, and it was an exhilarating trailer. What was the last SRK performance that you were like that I loved? Bold by. Ah, uh, I really liked his performance in Fan. Hmm. I loved his performance in Fan. I thought it was, and I thought that he tapped into that Delhi wala Londa in a very interesting so, way. And I think somewhere under, we will say you can take yeah. the Londa out of out Delhi, of Delhi, but you can't, can't take, take the, the Delhi, Delhi out of the Londa. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And uh, that was a, but that was again a brave performance hmm. and a very uh, uh, a disturbing film, a very courageous film for him to do. And and especially that his his performance, <clears throat> both as both the characters, I thought was extraordinary, extraordinary. Yeah. I all I love his all his lot of his performances. You know, like uh, of course, Chakte India is one of the greatest man. And 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 as this used to be a time where I used to watch Chakte India every day. Ev- oh, man, every day I remember the film. Brilliant, brilliant, and brilliant filmmaker yes. also, Shamita. Shamita, amazing, amazing filmmaker. Yeah. Would you send your book to Sharuk? <laughs> Man, he, he must be getting. Books? He must be getting inundated. I gave him my first book. He must be getting inundated with like. I don't want to bug him. It's <laughs> like, sir, please read my book. <laughs> he must be getting too many books. But he's a avid reader himself. He absolutely is, yeah. and and I believe he writes. So he's this thing. Uh, he writes as well. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. So, what next for you? So now this this is one of those rare productive years as far as <laughs> acting is concerned. There's a, a lot of stuff happening in in the oven. There's a lot of stuff there because I mean there's a web series for Voot which is coming out. Then the reuniting with uh, Mr. Bhardwaj after 12 years in this yeah. lovely uh, web series called Chali Chopra, which is coming out. It's an Agatha Christie adaptation. It's yeah. great fun, and the whole family, all five of us, are there in that. Yeah, amazing. What a must do, though, guys. It's like full. घर पे काम पे पता ही नहीं चलता. You are at home or at work. <laughs> Does any situation break into a scene? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Garpe. Garpe, you mean like do we start acting with each other? <laughs> yeah, you can just start, start doing Rona Dona, mummy. Do you have like you can <laughs> you can just have like all your discussions and all at your house because yeah. Adha crew to wahi pe to it will be economically better <laughs> to call everyone else at your place. No, but we work in the theater together. We do collaborate yeah. with each other on the stage. So we we have the that sort of process very much so. Where we're complete, we're sort of brainstorming together. Where we're, we're, we're you know throwing tossing ideas across with each other, coming up with stuff together. That's a very essential part of the whole artistic process as far as theater is concerned, and especially even in the film. Mm. And my uh, brother's contribution to the film is immense because he composed the score for it. Oh, and the score, the, the score is beautiful. Nice. And and Saba also she's also acting in the film and she also sung so beautifully her voice is just gorgeous and so she's also sung and and so that that's a really uh, it's a that was a very emotional very special project and this is even also Someone called a project called a picnic Pic, a picnic exactly exactly <laughs> a family family <laughs> picnic yeah literally like, if I'm cinematic cinematic Must be project picnic. for everybody else for you it's like ha huh, mama chalo papa <laughs> what do you call your parents mama, I call papa. my dad uh, my dad baba and I call my mom ma oh. mama yeah. <laughs> and uh, this thing so yeah but but uh, so there's the wood web series there's vishal ji's web series there's my dad's short film there's, there's the book. vishal bharadwaj series that's going to come out on sony live sony live yeah 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 and that's a lovely wonderful sony cast making some crazy film they're bagging some yeah. good very good, very stuff, good yeah. stuff yeah and this has got a tremendous cast hmm. got a fantabulous cast of great young actors and also veterans like the, the great neena gupta gulshan grover some amazing people in the in the show and and it's an agatha christie it's one of the it's the first indian agatha christie adaptation hmm. the first official one i'm sure hindi films must have ripped it, <laughs> ripped off agatha christie yeah. a lot in the <laughs> 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 चेपली आएगा बहुत सारे प्लॉट्स 
<laughs> Don't know, just think. Uh, no, but uh, but but yeah. So there's that also, and there's there's uh, another film also. What about in terms of books? Books. So whenever I publish a book, I always have one in the oven oh. ready. So nice. there's another one which will this thing uh, hopefully see the light of day soon, hmm. inshallah. And like, what can you tell us about that? That's a very diff. That's a complete departure for me hmm? because that is also that's a very uh, that's rooted little more in real life work of humanity, if I may call it so. There's a there's a sort of gentleness mm-hmm. involved out there because my first two novels were very mean spirited, uh, hard boiled novels, and this one is. A different kind of creature in itself. This is a half fry. This is this is like yeah, a complete. This is time. tentacles coming out of the half fry. It's like. It's <laughs> <laughs> like. Nahi. Excellent. This is our thumbnail. <laughs> it's like. Have you seen John Carpenter's The Thing? Hmm. One of the great I've, horror yeah, movies yeah, of all time, yeah. where everybody who starts their head starts yeah, spreading yeah, opens yeah, and yeah. tentacles are pouring out. I've not seen the film. I've seen the VFX breakdown I've of that the film. VFX, yes. The greatest VFX yeah, of all time. At that time. All time practical, no CGI. Yeah, exactly. All practical effects. Even American Werewolf in London was like that. So, so anyway, so yeah, that's that's definitely that sort of element is 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 very much there of the crazy, of the wild, of the outrageous in this book. But the the, the fourth novel is much more, I would say, closer to the earth mm. in that sense. It's closer nice. to yeah, more down to earth that novel is a little more realistic. <laughs> nice. Finally, last question from yes. my side: mountains of. Water bodies or beaches for you. You know what? Because I've, this book has. Yeah, worked. this has. This is absolutely. This was supposed to be my first question, but like I didn't even open these notes. And all. <laughs> so that's a very interesting question. If you would have asked me this, uh, maybe three, four months ago, I would have said beaches. But in this instance, going up to Manali right now and shooting the web series there, oh, okay, there was similar. something about. You know, I don't know what it is. Bombay has become a very chaotic city of late because of the construction. It's become, and I'm, I suppose you guys face this in Delhi as well. You need yeah, scenic beauty. You yeah. really uh, ache for nature and that kind of thing. But and I swear to God, this time when I went to Manali for the shoot, it was a truly a very calming and tranquil and serene experience and i truly fell in love with the mountains in a new in a wholly different way so i would definitely pick the mountains, mountains. nice yeah. great man thanks a lot for wonderful this talking to you pratik and, and thank you for having me man i really no, appreciate no, no, it it was so great man. to be here my man <laughs> and his book the, the forsaken <laughs> wilderness ha huh, say it in a it is slightly in a dramatic accent. the forsaken wilderness <laughs>